I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 28th of November, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today, we're going to be talking about some don't do items that are really important for those of you who are dreaming of coming to visit Nicaragua in the upcoming future. I'm not talking about those of you who are coming here for tourism or just travel, who want to explore a little bit of the country, explore some of our food, check out the beaches, do some surfing or whatever. I'm talking about those who are looking at coming down here a little bit more permanently. There are some very tried and true do and don'ts that you can do from abroad that are pretty important. And I want to cover those because we so often see people making these mistakes. I want to help you avoid them, but we're going to get to all that right after the bump. Following along with my Bolivia travels, we still have some Bolivia content that is yet to come, but I wanted to get some Nicaragua content in while I'm back here and I've had some pressure issues. And one of these is I've had people mentioning how, very specifically, but this comes up a lot, they were sure that my show was wrong because the prices on property is extremely high. It's so expensive to move to Nicaragua. Things are just outrageous. It's like the same prices as the United States. How could it be so cheap like I talk about on the show? But when they say this, of course, they watch the episodes where I say it's cheap and they miss the episodes where I said, why, if they look online, they're gonna see things that are fake prices that make it look really expensive. And so they took half the advice or half the information and missed the other piece. So this brought me to, there really are some very important, don't do these things. And I wanna have a video, one, that I just want you guys to see, but I want you to be able to share this with people when they're doing these things. So you can say, guys, you gotta check this video because these are very specific by the book. Everybody gets it wrong. I got it wrong. You're gonna get it wrong. Naturally, we, if you're coming from North America or Europe, you're gonna be so driven to do these mistakes and people here, especially expats, who know that we're driven to make these mistakes are gonna prey on you because it is such a common mistake and it leaves you exposed so easily. So what, what is this really big don't do? When you're looking at moving, if you're just looking to come down and do some volcano surfing, great. Look at all the different hotels, look at all the different restaurants, find the things you wanna do, that's fantastic. But if you're looking to come down maybe for retirement, you're looking for a vacation home, you're looking to maybe make a move, you want to be an expat, digital nomad, there's a giant temptation. And especially here in Nicaragua, the drive for this is much higher than it is in other places for whatever reason, possibly because it's just much more approachable. The laws and stuff make it much easier for you to move here. And that temptation is to start looking at property or even worse businesses, but we'll assume just property, whether it's land or houses or an apartment or whatever, you're gonna start looking at that from a broad. You, you make that first decision. Oh, Nicaragua looks really interesting. I want to learn more about it. And then you start looking into some beaches or some mountain towns, maybe the city. You say, wow, that, that seems like it might be right for me or Ometepe for sure. Look at this island. How cool is that? And long before you even know where these things are compared to each other, what their pros and cons are, what their weather is like, what their travel is like, whatever, you start saying, well, I want to, I want to know what it would be like to buy there. I want to do some planning. And so you start looking at houses online, you start looking at uh, real estate listings, you do these things, and then you start saying, well, maybe maybe we should jump on this because it looks like prices are going up, the market's moving really quickly, we need to buy something. Let's break this down. That first initial, I'm interested in Nicaragua, you should pretty much stop there. Of course, you need to come down and travel and tour. And I say this a lot, come down and experience the country. Make sure it makes sense for you. Do that first. Don't start dreaming about really specific things that are so disconnected from what you're looking for. You don't know which town is gonna be good. You don't know which place is gonna have what you want. You don't know any of that stuff. And so if you start looking at specifics, you're very likely going to, and this goes for anyone anywhere, this is not Nicaragua specific, you're going to lead yourself astray. You're gonna start becoming uh, interested in very specific houses, interested in very specific opportunities that may not even be real. You don't even know if they exist in the country. And that second piece, you don't know which part of the country is gonna make sense for you. So don't start getting too uh, attached to any particular area. First, come down and explore those different areas. That's just a general rule. We say it an awful lot. But here's the big one. Here's the thing I don't normally say because it feels like just looking is so safe. As long as you follow the rest of my advice, you'd be pretty much safe with this. But 
pretty much is the best I can give you. Humans are emotional creatures, and it's important when you're doing something like this, because we're talking about being exposed to con artists, it is really important that unless you have absolute extreme self-control at an emotional response level, not just, I'm not gonna do that thing, but I'm not going to think that thing, and that danger is, do not even look at online listings for houses. Do not look at House Hunters International. Do not search for what's available. And that seems like, how can that be a bad thing? How can research be a bad thing? And this is something that I, I work in business, I do a lot of consulting, and one of the things we tell people is, being lied to never informs you. One of the reasons you don't go to salespeople and ask for advice is because they will load you with bad advice, because that is their job, they are paid to mislead you, or to trick you, or to convince you. And they will give you advice that is engineered to make you feel like what you thought is wrong. So you say, oh, I think I need an, a Toyota Camry. That's the right car for me. Well, when you go to a dealer, they're going to be like, yeah, but this Ferrari would be so much cooler. And they'll come up with reasons why you think you should, why they think you'll respond positively to that Ferrari. Well, it's got better resale value. Oh gosh, it does. Maybe, maybe I should buy that. You know that doesn't make financial sense. You know that's a bad decision. But they're playing on your emotions. And, they, and it's not that they're going to just get you into a Ferrari. Maybe they're going to get you into a Maserati by showing you the Ferrari. You've already introduced yourself on the Toyota, and you're going to find some middle ground where you go, well, I, I, could, I can kind of go that way, but not that far. Right, But you still got a car that doesn't make any sense, and it may not even have the resale value of the Ferrari. You forgot the reason that you were considering the Ferrari for a split second in the first place, because this is how humans work. With real estate listings online, first of all, we've covered this ad nauseum. They are not real. People here in Nicaragua, this is not a market. We do not have a central listing service. We do not do online listings. That is not how people who live here, that is not how people who are from here search for houses. It is not how it's done, especially not in this market where everything is for sale. You can't put everything online. It doesn't make any sense. No one can take the effort of putting their houses online if no one's even going to look at them. And there are so many more houses available, so much more land available than anyone is going to seriously look at. There is no purpose to putting it all online. So if you see something online, it is already a tiny subset of what is available and it is going to be overpriced because they know you're looking online. They know you're not doing the things that locals do. They know you're not shopping around because if you were shopping around, you wouldn't go online because you would know what's available. You would know what to look for. And so by putting it online, you know they've targeted someone who isn't paying attention, someone who's not looking for correct information in the correct way. So they're going to for whatever reason, right? They're gonna inflate the price because why not? It doesn't make any sense to show a fair price because it doesn't do them any good. What if you buy from abroad? What if you just go, I don't go, I just gotta grab this, right? They wanna take that chance. Sure, it's a one in a million shot, but there's no shot otherwise, right? Nobody is going to buy from abroad based on true prices. They're just gonna go, oh, everything's available, nothing's selling, I'm just gonna come down and take my time and get exactly the right thing for me. Anyone who's buying or looking online, they're, they're hoping that you're going to get desperate, you're gonna get panicky, you're gonna get excited, and make a purchase at two to a hundred times, okay, a hundred times is a lot, but easily two to 10 times the market value. Right, It's easy to convince someone from North America or Europe that $200,000 makes sense for a house, even if on the ground people will go, ah, 25000 I don't know if it's worth it. Right, That house may have been empty for 10 years and only been asking $20,000, but from abroad, someone might easily just jump and say, ooh, 200000 I can't afford to pass this up. They didn't do their research and realize that there are literally thousands upon thousands of houses at a fraction of that cost that are nicer all over the country that they could buy. They're not doing that research. So the thing is, is that when you go online and look at these listings, and it could be any number of services, I'm not picking out anyone in particular, this is the entire concept of online listings, is that all of these are engineered to make you feel like there is pressure to buy and prices are higher than they are. Everything about it. If you choose, let me be really clear, there is no gray area here. If you go and open and do searches online, you start looking at online houses for markets like Nicaragua, you are deciding to trick yourself with false information. Now, some people are really good at looking at those listings and going, I know this is all fake. I'm just enjoying the pictures. I'm getting some ideas about design. But most people, 99% of people, you, for example, every one of you, 
If you do that, while you may have an awful lot of self-control, while you may be able to repeat to your friends and family and partner, this is probably an inflated price. This is probably meant to mislead me. These are probably doctored pictures. You are still going to start to skew your mentality. That's how these things work. It is not that one online uh, listing is going to trick you. That is very unlikely. What actually happens is that by looking at a number of online listings over time, your basis of comparison starts to fall apart. Eventually, your brain starts to accept that these inflated prices and these houses that may not even exist, they may just be computer generated pictures, they may be houses that aren't really available, sometimes they're just pictures from somewhere, it could be houses that have not been constructed yet or already sold or just not in the location that they say they are. And sometimes they're real, it goes all over the place, but you don't know. So you have this random information but it is engineered that over time, looking at listing after listing, you will start to forget what $30,000 is of value. Oh, 30,000, that's just off beach, that's a three bedroom home, okay, cool. I have something to work from. And pretty soon you start going, well, 100,000, that seems reasonable. That 30,000, I've forgotten about that. Then you start thinking that 100,000 is good. And then you start basing your comparison on these other fake listings compared from one to another. And fake could be completely fake or it could just be an inflated price. And over time you start to think of the market as costing two or three times as much as it is. Maybe you're not going to be tricked into paying 10 times, but you might easily be tricked into paying double. You could easily come away and say, oh, Scott's crazy. Things are really expensive in Nicaragua. They're not cheap, but not based on we explained you have to walk around and look at the prices. If you go online, you know those prices are going to be high. You know, as soon as you click search on Google, you should know that you're going to be shown an inflated price. You will feel it's expensive because that is the engineering that's gonna to happen to you. This is social engineering in action in prices of houses. And so you should, if you have the reaction, oh, that seems expensive. Boy, Scott's crazy, it must be expensive. You have fallen for the trick, it has worked. Now, you can work through it, right? And the person who said this to me, they're coming here, they're like, I hope I'm wrong, right? But they, they missed that we've done video after video saying that this would happen if they did it. So I'm breaking it down in this video for that purpose. But it is really important to understand that no matter how much you feel like looking at online listings, that you'll be able to avoid being tricked by them. The fact that you think you can avoid being tricked by them suggests you can't be. The more you think you're the exception, the more you're the rule, which is generally the case. The people who feel most impervious to those mental tricks are the ones who fall for them first. So if you think you can look at those and be, oh, I'm gonna be safe, I know that I'm gonna just be misled over time, but you're still willing to open it, tells your own brain is saying, but I wanna be tricked, let's go open it anyway. Because if you really accepted that you don't know if anything in these are true, why would you open it in the first place? The, you're not gonna learn from the price, you're not gonna learn from the pictures, you're not gonna learn from the, the layout because you don't know which of those things are true. So presenting yourself with, and it doesn't require, right? This is very important. We don't know for certain that every single price is fake. We don't know for certain that every single listing is false, right? There must be true ones out there somewhere. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. That's fine, but you can't identify them. What will happen is because you don't know which things are real, which things are, are legit, which things matter, over time, you will start to use other listings as a comparison. Everybody's brain does this. And so with that, if you look at enough houses online, you will start to feel like something is a good deal, but you're basing it off of other things that are less good deal that were never, none of them are a good or bad deal. They're all completely made up for the purpose of making you confused in the first place. And this is how marketing works. If you've ever looking for a book on this seriously, uh, uh, Predictably Irrational is an amazing read on how you can manipulate the brain in this way. And accepting that you're irrational and that you will be tricked by these things is the first step. And the second step is don't intentionally give yourself false information. Don't set yourself up to be in less of a good position than you normally would be. If you didn't look at any of those, those sites, you would have every bit as much information as someone who did, right? You take two people that are otherwise equal. One never looks at anything online for listings. They look at like pictures of cities. They look at maps. They, wa they watch travel videos. That's fine. They know a lot of stuff about Nicaragua in general. The other person watches all that same stuff, but also looks at a whole bunch of house listings online. The one who never looked at the house listings is better informed 
not because they know more, but because they don't have a pre-established false baseline of what pricing and options may exist. That's really important. That's how much it's a bad idea to look. You can't look at false or unknown reliability information and use that as a basis for growth. It doesn't work that way. So this is a very important just life hack for yourself. Don't intentionally feed yourself false information and this includes marketing everywhere, right? It, it's a very big thing. Americans especially believe it is taught through some cultural aspect that marketing must be based on a truth and it does not need to be. Marketing is based on using mechanisms to get you to trick yourself and it's very, very good. They've gotten really good at this. People who study marketing know how to make you confused and how to make you act emotionally and even to the point where you can point out that, oh, this is a trick and you can't get past it. Famously, in Predictably Irrational, they did a study like this where they presented a class on exactly how one of these mental tricks is done to a Harvard business class, and then immediately in that same class, with the warning that they were going to do it, the majority of the students fell for the trick even having been taught and told that it was about to happen. They didn't have the self-control internally in their minds to not emotionally fall for some of the standard tricks, even though they're really obvious and very easy to calculate and, and predict and, and test. One of the places you see it all the time is in the size of foods at restaurants. There's a reason why things come in so three sizes. Small feels too small, large feels too large, the prices don't make sense. Medium is the one with the highest profit margin for the company. They don't have to make the medium size make sense because humans will naturally force themselves to pick it because it feels like a middle ground, regardless of the fact that it may not have the best value for them. In many cases, it's, well, you get free refills with a small one. The medium one, you're not gonna get fewer refills. You're just gonna spend more money. The big one, yeah, you may have thrown some away. It's too much, like it makes it easy to make the argument, but they calculate how to trick you and make the sizes and make the prices based on not what makes sense for them, but what makes you respond in a certain way to it. The same tactics are used with cars, with houses, with all kinds of things. Now on top of just the online stuff, like these are very carefully engineered in most circumstances. It is good general rules not to look at that information, but it goes farther than that. I went and took the time to watch the video on uh, uh, House Hunters International when they came to Las Pinitas here in Nicaragua into a zone I know extremely well. In fact, two out of the three houses that are on the show, I know them personally, and I know where the third one is. Every single shot that is done in the show, I know where the camera was placed, uh, and we have indirect knowledge of the people in the show. It's really important because you watch this show and it's not that old, and in watching it, you really get this impression that, first of all, that the people are really looking at a house. A lot of those things are staged. I know lots of people who've had their houses shown, not a lot, I know a few people, who've had their houses shown on House Hunters and they were not actually for sale. They just had a good show house. So they showed it, pretended that they looked at it. And that's how they do a lot of those shows. A lot of times they've already got a house or whatever. They just show some random things. They get some fake reactions. They put it together. Sometimes I'm sure some of it is real, but a lot of it we know is fake. In this particular case, they made a big deal about these houses and different aspects of them and different things in town and talked about the pricing and how they were going to make money by renting out a room and how somehow renting out a room would pay all of their mortgage, which logically makes no sense at all. Like, if that was possible, why wouldn't the person just get their own house? Like, the numbers don't add up, and the people who were in it are like, this is amazing, we're going to do this. Well, living here in the area, everyone we know who's been around for a long time knows these people and knows that they didn't get this house, it didn't work out, they didn't make that money, they left immediately. Nothing, None of it played out the way that the show made it seem, but the show makes it seem like paying high rents is, is completely normal and that you will magically get those high rents just paid for by renting out a room because someone else will pay an even higher rent and all kinds of things that don't make a lot of sense, but they show them on the show as if this is just accepted truth and, and that's dangerous as well. So even things that are not designed to sell you anything are full of misinformation because that misinformation makes it seem good. They don't want to make it too cheap or people would flock in and they would not watch other episodes. They don't want to make it too accurate or people will start using the show to like gauge something. Instead, the numbers are really just kind of random. But when you watch these shows, it's really easy to get sucked in and think that they're giving you useful information, especially when you watch an episode where you can really easily go identify every house that they're talking about in just a few minutes. Literally every house that they show, you can just go down the street and go, oh, there it is, there it is, yep. And now what did they say the prices were? What did they say the options were? And none of those are correct. 
So all that research that you do from abroad is really dangerous. Now, I say that, of course, shows like mine, I'm not trying to show you a house. I'm not trying to give you an exact price. I mean, sometimes we show houses and we're just showing on the ground rentals and it's we're not selling them, right? So these are the prices we're seeing, gives you something to gauge off of. But if someone is selling something, if someone is actively making an, uh, a, a website so that you can go spend money, if they're engaged in trying to pull you into a service to sell you a house, those things are very, very dangerous, especially when you're abroad. Being here, it is so easy in just days to know that those numbers are, are crazy, that the idea that houses are turning over quickly is crazy. You can go anywhere in the country, no one is buying and selling houses. They're sitting on the market for months or years at a time, sometimes decades at a time, but normally not quite that bad. So you know once you're here, everything's laid back. There's no pressure to buy, take your time, and there's unlimited inventory. And even if there's a place that you're interested in but it doesn't have a for sale sign, go knock on the door because chances are they would love to sell it to you. So there's exceptions, but the majority of the time, they would love to sell it to you, but they're not putting it out for sale because they know if they put it online that no one who's really serious is going to find them there. That's not where serious people look. And if they do put it online, they're going to be in a sea of fake listings that they'll probably never stand out. And if they do, well, their their best chance when doing so is to mark up the price by two or three times. But they don't want to do that because it would undermine things. And it takes an effort that has little chance of paying off. So why take the effort? It doesn't financially make sense. Same reason they don't put out a for sale sign. Three years ago, when we were looking at houses in, in one of the southern beaches, we went to the beach and we saw nothing for sale, absolutely nothing. And we asked one of the locals, what's for sale? And he looked across the beach and he said, all of it, just go knock on a door. There's no one who doesn't want to sell their house if given the opportunity because the market is bad, people are panicking and no one can afford things. And so even if they had something that they liked, well, they would like to get that money and upgrade. Right? They would like to be mobile too, but they're stuck with the old property. Buying their property gives them the ability, let's say you bought a property for them for 100,000, they had 25,000, they can go find a place for 125,000 and upgrade right? because everything's for sale and it's their chance to leverage that as well. So even those people who want to have property, they wanna move up. Those who are just trapped with it and need to unload it for financial reasons, they want to get out. Everybody's looking for an opportunity and nothing's moving. So that there's no for sale signs, just go ask. Chances are you'll get an amazing deal and they're not gonna to try to give you a crazy price under normal circumstances because their only chance of selling is by being reasonable. Because the only people who are actively going around trying to buy are doing their research and aren't going to pay Hail Mary prices. When the market is really good, you get the Hail Mary people, and it, it sometimes you do sell things at many times at their actual price. But in general, you really want to get here, be on the ground. Do not look online. I cannot stress this enough, and no one is going to listen to me. So in some ways, I'm just talking to the air. Literally, I will never meet one of you who actually says, you know what, Scott, you were right. I, I thought about it, and I just avoided looking online. Every person's going to go, I'm the exception. I'm going to look online, and then you're going to say to me, when you come down and talk to me, you're going to say, boy, I, I, I thought things were so expensive, and, and they got me to get into the deal, and I signed up. How do I get out of this? What have I done? Because I was sure I was the exception. I was sure this person wasn't trying to take advantage of me. I was sure this deal was good because I saw these 400 other properties that cost 50% more than this one. How could it not be a deal? And I'll say, how could it be a deal? It was online. You knew that by looking, you were going to become emotionally attached. Your brain was going to change what the baseline should be. And you were going to do exactly this. The moment you went and opened that search, the moment you went and looked on that real estate website, you made the decision that being skewed by those numbers and that becoming emotionally driven was going to override common sense and market knowledge. That's a decision that by opening the page, this is what I really want to get across at the moment that you say, nope, I'm the moment that you, all right. The moment that you decide you're going to feed your brain with these false facts, with this misinformation, you're making the decision that you're willing to go down the path of being misled. And that decision, not the actual misleading ones later, but that decision that being misled is an activity you're okay with is the one that triggers your brain to say, okay, you know what? We can start accepting false facts. We've already decided that we're okay with misinformation. And so feeding yourself misinformation is a starting point that is very hard to recover from 
because you have to then go back and say, where did I make a mistake? Oh, I made a mistake. And when you make a mistake, emotionally, we try to reverse rationalize it. And our reverse rationalization generally requires that we pretend that that information might be good, which, which reinforces how bad it is. So stopping that initial mistake is the only spot where we have a really good opportunity in this case to prevent being misled in some ways by ourselves. I hope this was useful. I know it's hard to get this information. It is so tempting. It is so desirous to go dream about houses you could have, look at opportunities, figure out what prices are, and prepare yourself. So when you hit the ground, you can just go buy a house, but it doesn't work that way. And wanting it doesn't make it available. It just isn't. And so it's important to understand that yes, Nicaragua is a great place to move to. Nicaragua has amazing opportunities. Nicaragua is very affordable, but it's not going to be those things if you don't treat it in the right way, which is true for anywhere. But Nicaragua has these specific pit, uh, pitfalls because of the type of market it is and because of the location from which so many people coming to Nicaragua come from, it creates a dichotomy that, that leaves a lot of opportunity open for scams or misinformation or people being misled or tricked or tricking themselves. So thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, share on social media, tell your friends and family about the show, and we'll have more Nicaragua and Bolivia content coming up in the next few days. I'll see you all tomorrow.